So our next speaker is Dr. Suman Pabu. He's a professor and the director of the cardiovascular research here, disease uh, at the UAB. And he will speak on immune cells and the cardiac uh, repair. <laughs> So uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Jay, uh, GQ, and Joel for inviting me. It's a real pleasure to uh, present again at this uh, symposium and uh, present some of our work on inflammation and immune activation and heart failure and how, uh, framing it to how this might impact uh, the talks you've heard earlier today about regeneration and repair. Now, this is a, a diagram from uh, the paper that came out of this symposium two years ago. Uh, which outlined roadblocks to, uh, to cardiac regeneration. And there were multiple that were outlined. And as you've heard early this morning, I think the primary uh, area of the primary obstacle is, is uh, engraftment and the lack thereof of uh, retention of cells and engraftment of cells uh, in the myocardium. Now, there have been a, the whole host of uh, 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 you know, avenues to try to try to attack this and, and improve this. but. I think that if we step back and look at the myocardium to which these kinds of therapies are being delivered, uh, we have to understand that all of these are states in varying degrees of inflammatory activation. And be it myocardial infarction or chronic heart failure, both of the uh, uh, disease states that are prominently uh, uh, evaluated these days for cell therapy, uh, these are really uh, pro-inflammatory states uh, of inappropriately sustained inflammation. And if you combine that with some uh, with a paper that came out recently in CERC Research uh, a few months ago, with intravenous mesenchymal stem cell delivery, uh, this was a, a figure that we, we wrote accompanying that paper in an editorial. These uh, investigators, which I'll talk about a little bit later, showed that uh, you don't need to have delivery into the organ, at least in the heart, to have beneficial effects in the myocardium, and that intravenous delivery seemed to have uh, cardiac reparative effects based on uh, paracrine factors that led to local and systemic immunomodulation, which then fed back and caused uh, beneficial effects on cardiac structure and function. So if we look at heart failure, uh, which is uh, what we study in the lab, most of the uh, anti-inflammatory and, and uh, 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 inflammatory paradigms of disease have uh, classically been linked to pro-inflammatory cytokines. And in fact, there were clinical trials uh, that inhibited, uh, using uh, uh, biological inhibitors uh, of tumor necrosis factor, inhibited pro-inflammatory cytokines, which really were paradoxically negative. And so uh, we know that sustained inflammation is characteristic of disease. So what we uh, uh, thought was that we're really looking at the tip of the iceberg here with cytokines. And then we really have to step back and look at the status of both the innate and adaptive immune systems, which uh, uh, here's some example uh, cell types from, from each uh, with the innate system, uh, with monocytes, macrophages, and dendritic cells, and the adaptive system uh, T and B cells, which are classically linked by antigen presentation. So what we wanted to do then was examine what happens to innate and, active and adaptive immunity in a state of chronic heart failure with the idea that if we're ever going to understand perhaps one of the reasons why cell therapy is not more uh, efficacious might be because of the interaction between inflammation uh, and the attempts at regeneration. So we uh, uh, examined uh, a mouse model of myocardial infarction. This is uh, shown pretty much here. This is eight weeks after myocardial infarction, which leads to a fairly reproducible state of ischemic cardiomyopathy and heart failure, and that's just shown here. Uh, on our 2D echoes and, and mitral valve Doppler showing systolic and diastolic dysfunction, cardiac enlargement, uh, systolic function will decline, and uh, changes of myocyte hypertrophy and interstitial fibrosis histologically. So if we look at that heart and uh, look, for example, for uh, innate immune cells, and this is just a stain, I hope this shows up uh, well, this is from MAC1, uh, but uh, this was published a couple, three years ago. But this is just to review that there is a, a robust increase, a two to three-fold increase, in the abundance of uh, macrophages in the heart, in the failing heart, uh, compared to, uh, to sham-operated hearts. And this extended to other innate immune cell populations, including dendritic cells, which are uh, marked here by CD11C. And here, uh, there was almost a four to five-fold increase uh, in, in uh, uh, dendritic cells in the heart. And we did a series of studies showing that uh, these were primarily pro-inflammatory, that this was a systemic activation, uh, 
and that there was biologic activity of these cells. And I'm not going to uh, go into those studies, but I would like to show you more recent data on the adaptive side uh, of, of the uh, uh, immune system. And these are the same uh, uh, disease conditions, so heart failure eight weeks after myocardial infarction and sham operated hearts, looking at CD4 and CD8 positive T cells. And you see that in both cases, not only is there an expansion of innate immunity, but there is a uh, increase in abundance and expansion of CD4 and CD8 T cells, which makes sense given that the primary function of dendritic cells is actually antigen presentation to T cells. So to look at this more uh, closely and precisely, we did flow cytometry. Uh, we used the gating strategy that we've shown here really to look at primarily CD4 T cells. We also looked at CD8 T cells, but these so-called CD4 T cells can be broken down into T helper 1, TH1 cells, TH2 cells, TH17 cells, and, and T regulatory cells that express FOXP3. So if we take a failing heart and we isolate mononuclear cells uh, from the heart, uh, this is what we see. This is uh, an example. I'm not going to, there's a lot of stuff on this slide. Just to point out that most, we can isolate mostly viable cells. So more than 95% of mononuclear cells are viable by 7AAD exclusion. But if we use uh, a series of markers that we show in this gating strategy, we see that there's a diffuse expansion of CD4 T cells that includes uh, total CD4, T regulatory cells, TH1 cells, TH2 cells, and TH17 cells. And then heart failure, if we look at the uh, ratios of uh, these various uh, T helper subsets, this is predominantly a TH2 and TH17 prominent, uh, predominant uh, uh, state in heart failure. And, and we have uh, supporting uh, confirmatory changes in, in cytokines that impact these cell populations being upregulated in failing myocardium. Now, this is not just a local event, and uh, this occurs systemically. And these are mediastinal lymph nodes, heart-draining mediastinal lymph nodes. And, in this animal model, there is consistent enlargement of uh, mediastinal lymph nodes in, in all of these animals with uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy. And if we look at this, uh, the populations by flow, we see an expansion of these uh, lymphocytic populations and uh, an increase in uh, both CD4 uh, T cells as well as all the CD4 uh, uh, T cell subsets that we saw in the heart. And these are draining uh, uh, the heart tissue. And we also saw an increase in CD8 T cells, which uh, I'll show you here just for the sake of completeness that there's an increase in CD8 T cells in the heart, in the spleen, uh, and in the lymph nodes, both in terms of frequency and quantitation. So heart failure then is an expansion of innate and adaptive immunity, both locally and systemically. So what this indicates then is that after myocardial infarction, while we're used to thinking about inflammation acutely, in a state of acute inflammation followed by inflammation resolution and repair. In the chronic state, in chronic heart failure, there's a recrudescence of inflammation that involves uh, both innate and adaptive immune subsets that parallels the change from a normal sized ventricle to this uh, uh, dysfunctional and dilated ventricle we term cardiac remodeling. And these cell types are very similar to the cell types that we see uh, in acute myocardial infarction. So the question is, uh, where do they come from and, and what are they doing there? Well, we uh, postulated earlier, based on our previous studies, that there, a lot of these cells come from the spleen. And we, uh, we, we put forth this cardiosplenic axis and ischemic heart failure, such that when there is a pathological remodeling of the heart following myocardial infarction, which leads to the classic pathological changes that we see at the tissue level, there's a parallel remodeling of the spleen with consistent splenic enlargement and changes in the splenic architecture, which I'll show you in a minute, but that these cells then traffic uh, to the heart uh, and are biologically active and induce injury. And this is kind of just shown in this summary slide. The way we show this is if we adoptively transfer unselected splenocytes from an animal with heart failure, and the control here is a sham operated animal eight weeks after operation, and we transfer these cells adoptively to naive animals that are, are uh, CD45-1 to identify uh, host and, and donor cells. And then we follow these animals out for an eight week period. What we see is that there is a progressive uh, LV dilatation, LV dysfunction, cardiac chamber enlargement, and evidence at the tissue level of localized fibrosis and injury that coincide with uh, 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 donor cells uh, here marked by CD45-2, indicating that there is homing to the heart of heart failure activated splenocytes, which then 
cause many of the uh, changes that we uh, uh, associate with pathological remodeling. So, uh, uh, so here, if this is the case, then if we take immune cells from a disease animal and transfer it to a naive animal and reproduce injury, this suggests that we're transferring immune cell memory. And this will get back into the cells that are responsible for memory, or T cells. So if we look at the spleen in, in ischemic heart failure, we see very profound changes. And these include expansion of white pulp, which is the lymphocytic areas and germinal centers, expansion of this so-called marginal zone, which contains specialized antigen-presenting cells and indicate heightened antigen processing. We see consistent splenic enlargement. But if we look at a, a more close uh, spatial analysis, we see that there is a spatial redistribution of these CD11 seed dendritic cells from uh, the marginal zone into the white pulp. And what this suggests is that there's active antigen presentation occurring from dendritic cells to C cells. Now, if this were the case, then we should see evidence of memory T cells activated in heart failure. So if we do flow cytometry, uh, we see, first of all, there is uh, uh, activation or uh, expansion of total uh, T cells. But if we use a series of markers that would uh, identify T cells that are antigen experienced or antigen exposed, and I've, I've shown that up here on CD44, as well as uh, markers of effector T cell activation and uh, T cell memory, as well as central memory T cells, we see that all of these CD4 positive populations are expanded in heart failure, which indicate that an ischemic cardiomyopathy traditionally thought of as a uh, you know, vascular and ischemic uh, injury-mediated disease is also a state of immune activation with activation of, of memory uh, of the immune system. And we think that this uh, memory is primed to cardiac injury, and this is transferable uh, to uh, uh, naive animals as a result of transfer. These uh, T cells are also pro-inflammatory. Here is just one marker showing a TNF expression in, in CD4 uh, positive T cells. There's a, a marked increase in uh, TNF positive uh, CD4 T cells. Uh, this is just uh, uh, using image stream to, to show that uh, we do have T cells in TNF expression. And this occurs not only uh, in the spleen, but also in the circulation. And I don't have it here, but also in the heart. There is an increase in pro-inflammatory uh, markers in these T cells. So the second question then is, uh, what are these uh, cells doing? And to uh, examine this, we took a couple of approaches. The first was we used an animal-mediated approach to deplete CD4 T cells in the established state of heart failure. So we used uh, anti-CD4, gave two doses, followed them out for another four weeks, and then at eight weeks we reassessed. And this is just to show you that we have a very specific uh, uh, inhibition or, or, or ablation of CD4 positive T cells in the blood, spleen, lymph node, uh, as well as the heart, but we don't have any effect on CD8 T cells. So if we look at the gravimetric data, if we do CD4 T cell ablation in heart failure, this is established ischemic cardiomyopathy, we see a reduction in cardiac uh, weight, a reduction in lung weight, and a reduction in spleen weight, all suggesting uh, less cardiac pathological hypertrophy. And these are representative echocardiograms showing that as compared to isotype control IgG, anti-CD4 antibody prevents progressive LV dilatation. So we are uh, actually uh, abrogating uh, the progressive remodeling that occurs in heart failure. And this is just quantified here as a uh, change in then diastolic volume and then systolic volume uh, stayed at uh, zero, no change when you give uh, CD4 uh, ablation and no change in EF. So this shows that T, uh, CD4 T cells are necessary for the progression of remodeling, but are they sufficient to cause injury? And for this, we isolated the splenic CD4 T cells uh, using Milteni columns. This is 95% viability and 80 to 85% purity. And we adoptively transferred selected CD4 T cells into naive mice. We also did a parallel experiment. This was much harder to do when we did cardiac CD3 T cell uh, isolation and, and transfer them into naive mice. I'll show you the splenic data here. And this was the experimental design. Uh, we followed them out uh, eight weeks after uh, adoptive transfer. And uh, these are uh, representative echocardiograms. I hope you could see that uh, uh, this is uh, from naive uh, animals and this is from heart failure animals. And this is, the light's not the best here, but what you see here is that there's a, a subtle uh, but, but reproducible systolic dysfunction that occurs uh, eight weeks after the transfer of 
uh, selected CD4 T cells from the spleen from animals with heart failure. That's quantitated here. So we see an increase in end systolic volume, a reduction in ejection fraction in animals, naive animals that received heart failure, uh, activated CD4 T cells versus uh, naive, and we see an increase in wall thickness uh, indicative of hypertrophy. We see cardiac enlargement, reproduction of many of the aspects of pathological remodeling, and we see an increase in fibrosis and, and cardiac hypertrophy. So this suggested then that the, the splenic activation and heart failure, at least the immune memory part of it, is really driven by, uh, by the adaptive immune system, by T cells, which include memory T cells, that are primed to induce cardiac injury and uh, uh, contribute uh, uh, essentially to uh, uh, progression of disease. So if we could conclude on this, the, the, the pathophysiology of chronic heart failure includes global expansion of innate and adaptive immune cells in the heart and the myeloid lymphoid organs, uh, activated immune cells including primed and pro-inflammatory CD4 T cells contribute to the progression of remodeling injury and fibrosis in the heart, and that splenic immune cells as part of this cardiosplenic axis home to the heart to induce immune cell mediated injury. And this immune memory, which we're presuming is maintained by central memory T cells, is retained upon adoptive transfer. And so ischemic cardiomyopathy then should be thought of at least in part as an autoimmune uh, cardiomyopathy that's immune cell mediated. Now why, why might this be important in uh, a cardiac repair? Well. The paper that I was mentioning at the start of this talk, this is a review from uh, Dr. Epstein who wrote that paper, indicated that there's a cardiosplenic axis that needs to be considered with cell therapy. And this is based on his studies using uh, uh, IV administered mesenchymal stem cells, which then uh, uh, circulate to various organs, uh, including the spleen, and in the spleen leads to a change in immune cell populations that are immunomodulatory on the average, and that this feeds back to uh, induce anti-inflammatory cells effects on the heart and improves cardiac function. This paradigm does not uh, uh, bring up uh, the need for a cell regeneration, but actually is more critically dependent on the change of uh, inflammatory and immune cell activation systemically, which then impacts uh, the heart uh, to induce a repair. So the implications then are that targeting immune cell populations, particularly in the spleen, may be a better approach to immunomodulation and heart failure, and perhaps as an adjunctive approach to improve the effectiveness of exogenous stem cells. So I'll stop there. I want to acknowledge the lab, especially Amin Ismahil and Sean Bonsal, who did the majority of the work here. Thank you. Uh, that's a key question, and, and the answer is we don't know. Uh, we put forth the possibility that there's a kind of a less specific, but due to damps that are released at the time of injury, that there's innate immune cell activation that, that this somehow then uh, activates adaptive uh, immune cells. But really, if you look at chronic human disease, chronic pro-inflammatory disease, such as, say, inflammatory bowel disease, what you see there is in a polyclonal T cell activation linked to multiple antigens. And we don't know the answer to that yet, but we think the same thing is occurring in heart failure. And to examine this, we are now isolating T cells from human hearts, failing hearts, and looking at uh, TCR sequences and see if we could derive some indication as to what that might be. Yes? Myocardial infarction, this, until the myocardial infarction, they are acting as a dormant stage. But when myocardial infarction is there, they have, uh, means, proliferate more. Did this uh, macrophage population increases is uh, because the macrophage from uh, the mesenchyma stem cell monocytes differentiated or the fetal derived macrophage present in the heart? Yeah, so, you know, obviously we didn't show any of that data here, but there are multiple papers showing that if you cause injury to the heart, myocardial infarction, that you have an influx of monocyte-derived 
uh, macrophages, and they're marked by CCR2, but that you also have proliferation of locally sourced macrophages. So both populations, fetal-derived as well as monocyte-derived populations, increase in the heart, but the proportion of monocyte-derived macrophages increases more than usual. So we have a greater influx of uh, bone marrow-derived uh, macrophages.